Olá, como estão? Tiveram uma boa semana? How was your week? Last week we focused on the verb ter, to have, and expressions with ter, which in English use the verb to be. Expressions such as to be hungry, ter fome, to be thirsty, ter sede, to be in a hurry, ter pressa, to be cold, ter frio. Remember those. We also saw how to use them in sentences. Here are some of those sentences we looked at last week. Some of the sentences are now on the screen. And what do they mean? Let's quickly go through them. Eu tenho fome? What is that? I am hungry. Correct. Tu não tens frio? What does that mean? Aren't you cold? Who am I addressing? I'm addressing one person, tu, and I'm addressing this person informally, in a familiar way. That is why I'm using tu. Tu não tens fome? Aren't you hungry? A senhora tem calor. Now I'm also saying, are you hot? Are you feeling hot? But now I'm addressing this person formally. That is why I'm using a senhora. A senhora tem calor. Ele tem razão. He is right. Vocês têm sono. Are you? You? I'm speaking to more than one person. Are you people? Are you sleepy? Vocês têm sono. Okay? Remember those sentences? But now let's focus just on the questions. The three sentences which are questions. That tu não tens frio? A senhora tem calor? Vocês têm sono? Let's focus on those questions. If I were to ask you those questions, how would you answer? Right? How would you answer these questions? Let's see. The first one. Tu não tens frio? How would you say? Yes, I am. I am cold. I'm asking, aren't you cold? So you're going to respond, yes, I'm cold. You would say, tenho, tenho. Now you're just using the verb. Remember, in Portuguese, that's very common. We don't need to use the pronoun. We don't need to say, I am, implied I am cold. You just use the verb, tenho. From the verb ending, I already know you are speaking about yourself. You are speaking about I. It's an I that that verb ending shows me. So if I ask, Tu não tens frio? And you want to answer, Yes, I'm cold. You would say, Tenho, I am. And to answer that in the negative? Não, não tenho. No, I'm not. Right? Want to try that one again? Tu não tens frio? Tenho. Não, não tenho. What about the next one? A senhora tem calor. Are you feeling hot? You, I'm addressing you formally. A senhora tem calor. And you would say, I am. Tenho, that's correct. Oh, no, I'm not. I'm not feeling hot. Não, não tenho. Okay. A senhora tem calor? Tenho. Não, não tenho. And the next one? Vocês têm sono? Are you guys sleepy? Are you plural sleepy? How would you answer that? Now I'm asking you, are you sleepy? So you're answering for the group. How would you do it in English? You would probably opt for saying, Yes, we are. We are. What is that? Nosh is we. What goes with nosh? That's correct. We learned it last week. Nosh temus. We are. Now answer just using the verb. Temus. We are. Vocês têm sono? Temus. No, we are not. We are not feeling sleepy? Não. Não temos. Okay, there. So what have we seen? 
In Portuguese, it is very common to answer questions just by using the verb. Are you hungry? I am. Are you thirsty? I am. Right? And you don't need to use the pronoun, just the verb. From the verb ending, I already know who you are talking about. Você tem frio? Yes. Tenho. Você. Are you cold? Yes, I am. Tenho. Vocês têm impressa? Vocês têm impressa? Are you guys in a hurry? Temos. A senhora tem pressa? Are you? I'm addressing you formally. A senhora tem pressa? That's correct. Tenho. I am. Okay. If all these expressions, to be hungry, to be thirsty, use the verb to have in Portuguese, when would we use the verb to be? Well, that's easy. You use the verb to be in the same circumstances, for the same kind of expressions as you would in English. Let's see some of those expressions in English which also use the to be, right? Not to have, to be in Portuguese. You already know some of them. How would you say, I am Anna? If you want to introduce yourself, you're saying your name. That's old news. We learned it before, remember? I am Anna. You're using the verb to be. How do we do that in Portuguese? You would say, correct, eu, okay, eu, so, a Anna. I am Anna. Same as in English. I am Anna. Remember how you said, I am married? How did you say that? I am married using the verb to be. In Portuguese, correct, you said eu sou casada. I'm also using the verb to be in Portuguese. Eu sou casada. Remember, for example, how you said I am Portuguese? That's it. Eu sou portuguesa. Eu sou Portuguesa, right? Also the verb to be. And how do you say, I am in South Africa? I am in South Africa. That would be, eu estou na África do Sul. Eu estou na África do Sul. I am in South Africa. But now we've got a problem here. Eu sou means I am. Eu estou means I am. What is happening here? You should be used to, to this by now. There's always more than one thing in Portuguese for one only thing in English. And this is no exception. In Portuguese, both eu sou and eu estou mean I am. So, conclusions, we have two verbs, two verbs for the verb to be in English. We have ser, ser, and estar, right? Both ser and estar mean to be, okay? So when I said, eu sou a Ana, eu sou casada, I am using the verb ser. That belongs to ser, to be. When I said, eu estou na África do Sul, I am in South Africa, estou belongs to the verb estar, but both mean to be. Ser means to be. Ishtar means to be. When do we use one and when do we use the, the other? Right, let's look at that. Ishtar is used for a temporary state, condition, 
action or place. Let me repeat it. Ishtar is temporary condition, action, state or place. The word to focus on there, the key word, is temporary. Something that does not last. So key word with Ishtar, temporary. What about Sir? Sir, on the other hand, denotes a permanent quality of being. Permanent quality of being. You use it for professions, for origin, and for permanent location. So, Sir, let's repeat that. A permanent quality of being. Use it for professions, for origin, for permanent location. Keyword there to focus on? Permanent. So, very simplistic. Star, permanent. Sorry, star, temporary. Sir, permanent. Okay? Those are your keywords for these two verbs. Sir and star mean to be. Ishtar denotes a more temporary state. Sir, a more permanent state. Got it? Right. So let's just see. You have been using both Sir and Ishtar even without realizing it. Even without knowing that one was permanent, the other one is more temporary, you have been using it. Okay? Let me show you. Let me show you how you have been using it. Sir and Ishtar. Let's revise. How did you say, I am Anna? Correct. Eu sou a Anna. There we go. We've got eu sou. Eu sou. Belonging to the verb ser. The permanent. And why permanent? I am Anna. It's your identity. It's permanent. Whether you like it or not, you are going to be Anna for a very long time. So eu sou. Permanent. Okay? Remember how you asked somebody that you were addressing informally? Are you married? How did you ask that? You're addressing someone informally. How did you say, are you married? Remember back? Yes, that's correct. You said, es casado. Es casado. There we go. It's the tu, the informal tu, es, right? Tu es, also belonging to the verb ser, the permanent. Why? I'm asking somebody, are you married? It's kind of a temporary, not so temporary, but a more permanent state. It's your m marital status. It is going to last for a long time, we hope. So we also use the permanent tu, ash, right? Ash. How did you ask somebody you were addressing formally? Are you married? You were addressing this person formally. So it's no longer ash casado, but e casado. Correct? E casado. And there we go. That's the third form of the, of the verb to be ser. O senhor é. A senhora é. So you, the formal you. You are. Okay? And remember, the formal you is the same as he or she. So it is the same. Il é. He is. Ela é. She is. There we go. Three forms of the permanent ser, which are so familiar to you. Okay? Now let's focus on ishtar, the non-permanent to be. You also have used it. Okay? I gave you an example just now. I am in South Africa. How did I say that? Eu estou na África do Sul. So I am with Ishtar is eu estou. 
eu estou. And it's a non-permanent. Why? Can you just see the difference? I am in South Africa. I am here now. Tomorrow I might not be here. Next year I might not be here. So it's a temporary condition. It's a temporary place. Okay? Let's see another one that you have used. Let's remember back to our first lesson, the greetings. How did you greet somebody? How did you say, how are you? And you were addressing somebody informally, in a familiar way. What was, how are you? It was, como estás? Como estás? There we go. That's tu of estar, non-permanent. And why were we using the non-permanent? Easy. We are greeting somebody. It's a temporary state. How are you? You might be fine now, but in five minutes' time, you might not be so fine. So when we greet somebody, it's the non-permanent, how are you, that we are using. Como estás? Okay. And when you greeted somebody addressing that person formally, what did you say? Como está? There we go. The third form of estar, right? Como está? Como está o senhor? Como está a senhora? Isn't that easy? Okay, so you've used these forms even without realizing it. And how did you greet a group of people? How did you say, how are you guys? You more than one person. You said, como estão? Como estão? There's another form of your verb, to be, estar. Como estão? You are greeting a group, vocês, you guys. Okay? And vocês is the same as eles or elas. Isn't that easy? Look at it. You've got all the gaps filled in, right? Nearly all the gaps. Let's look at what we are missing. We are missing from estar. We are just missing we are. Nós, we, estamos. Nós estamos. We are. From ser, you are missing the last three people. We are. From ser is nós somos. We are. Nós somos. And vocês, you guys are. Vocês são. Vocês são. The same for they. Eles or elas. Eles são, elas são. There we go. Not difficult at all. Now you know there are two verbs for to be in Portuguese. It is ser and estar. And in a very simplistic way, one is more permanent, ser. The other one is more temporary, estar. Right? Now, you are going to be left with ser and estar. Revise it. We are going to do it in more detail next week and see sentences with both. Okay? Adeus, boa noite, uma boa semana. Have a good week.